She took genes which is responsible for the height of the plant as well as for the color of the plant. We'll call it as dihybrid cross because two characters is considering here. Bisexual flowers means both the male and the female reproductive structure will be present in the same flower. That is the andresium and the gynesium will be present in the same flower. This pea plant when he has sown it in the garden by looking at it he can say this is a tall plant, this is a short plant, right? So that is called as phenotypic ratio. everyone a warm welcome to this session of concept class for class 12 biology i'm dr divya biology faculty so in this session that is for chapter 4 principles of inheritance and variations we'll talk about mendelian inheritances wherein in this particular session we'll concentrate on mendelian's inheritance of one gene that is monohybrid Cross. So, before starting Mendelian inheritance, we need to remember these two scientists that is Gregor Mendel and Reginald Punnett. So, Gregor Mendel, he is called as the father of genetics. So, he is the father of genetics because he was the first person to say that there are something called as factors which are present in the pea plants or in the plants which results in variation in the pea plants among a particular population. At that time, he didn't know that it was called as genes, but he called it as factors. And he also proved to the people how the segregation of the genes and all that occur. Because he was the first person to put forth an idea about it, he is called as the father of genetics. Later on, those factors were given a name and it was called as genes. Reginald Punnett, he was the first person to give the Punnett square. So, when we need to calculate the phenotypic ratio or genotypic ratio, we need to put Punnett square to know about the characteristics of the plant. So, that Punnett square was given by Reginald Punnett. So, these two scientists are very important in the field of genetics. So, next let's talk about Mendel's law of inheritance. So, inheritance. So, what do we mean by inheritance? Inheritance means we get something from someone, right? We inherit characters from a parents that characters can be the dominant characters there are two types of genes one is dominant genes and the recessive genes usually the dominant genes that are, are the ones which are inherited from the parents so what are his laws we will look into that is regarding his laws we'll talk about that in detail in the next session in this session we'll talk about some hybridization experiments on garden pea plants so mendel he preferred the garden pea plant because it provided a variety of flower that is different shades of flower colors be it pink, white or purple were available and also it was easy for him to study the variations in the characters in a garden pea plant so that is why he chose it and not just that in his garden he had a lot of pea plants cultivating there. So, why did he particularly choose these garden pea plants for his experiment or breeding experiment? We will look into. So, he took various characters that is one was the height of the stem wherein he took a dominant character tall and one more as dwarf. And next he chose the color of the flower violet and white. Then he studied the position of the flower, whether the position of the flower was an axial, that is whether it arises from the axis. Say for example, if this is the stem and this is the petiole of the leaf, if the flowers develop here, we call it as the axis, that is in the uh, nodal region in between. Next, whether the flowers are terminal. Now this is the stem, if the flowers develop at the tip of the stem, it is terminal. So, that also he chose. So, next talking about shape of the pod. So, in shape of the pod, he chose inflated as dominant character. Inflated means it was properly round. Constructed means it had some ridges and grooves or some pits and all that which was not properly round. That is constructed. Next, he chose the color of the pod. He chose green pod and yellow pod. Next, the shape of the seed, round and wrinkled seed. Next, the color of the seed that is yellow and green. Now, don't get confused. Color of the pod, this is the pod. Say, for example, the pea, this is the pod. And inside the pod, seeds will be there. These are the seeds. Okay, so don't get confused between a pod and a seed. So, the fruit is called as a pod in the case of pea and the seed inside, it is a seed. So, these are the characters that he chose. So, always for his experiment, 
he made crosses so of course if a seed has to set and a future generation of plant has to come up then a cross between the male and the female plant needs to be done right you have studied about that in sexual reproduction of flowering plants wherein the anthers will release the pollen the pollen will go and it will stick on the stigma and if it is compatible it will germinate it will release the male gametes one of the male gamete will fuse with the egg the other will fuse with the central cell having the polar nuclei they will develop into the that is the one which fused with the egg will form the zygote the embryo and will develop into the seed all that we have studied right so we need a male plant and a female plant so all these characters that he chose was of the male plant the dominant characters and all these characters that he chose was of the female plant now we know what all characters he took for his experiment so we'll study about his experiment so first experiment that he did was a mono hybrid cross which is called as inheritance of one gene what do you mean by inheritance of one gene only one character he took into consideration which character he took into consideration the height of the plant so the genes which are responsible for the dwarfness or the short height of the plant or dwarf for the tall height of the plant so what did he consider here that one gene so how many genes did he take one gene so one gene which was tall tall plant that was from the male and another gene which was short plant or dwarf plant that was from the female so because only one character is considered only one gene is considered it is called as mono hybrid cross hybrid because he is making a hybrid plant by crossing between a male and a female plant one plant having a dominant character creating a hybrid so that is why it is called as how many genes did he use here one so that is why it is called as mono hybrid cross now let's look into the steps he took forward in crossing a pea plant or that is in crossing a pea plant so selection of two pea plants with contrasting character should be done did he take contrasting characters here yes right he took a male plant which was tall and he took a female plant which was short or dwarf two contrasting characters right so therefore selection of two pea plants with contrasting characters next thing is removal of anthers the anthers should be removed that is that process is called as what emasculation so that self pollination is avoided because in a pea plant both the anthers and the say for example this is a pea flower i have drawn a pea flower like this in the uh, pea flower stigma is also there anther is also there or the gynoecium is also there the antherium is also there this is what this is the female reproductive structure this is the male reproductive structure now if we don't remove the anther what will happen we cannot undergo pollination in a controlled condition right so say for example this is a tall plant okay so ovules that is bearing the gene will also be tall the uh, pollen which is bearing the gene will also be tall now if we do a pollination between this only can we know the difference of course we'll understand that a tall plant only will get form because both the genes are dominant there so what he did was he removed this anther he emasculated it removed this anther and one more plant so this is a tall plant this is a short plant okay or this is a short plant we will consider this because we have retained the female reproductive part so we'll consider this as a short plant now this is a tall plant we will consider this as a tall plant now here what is there the anther is there now he took the pollen grain from this anther and he dis dusted it onto the stigma of this particular anther now seeds will set when he sow the seeds which uh, the plant will be taller right or it can't be of intermediate height but it will be taller why because dominant gene has been taken so that is what he did there then he collected the pollen grains from the other male parent and transferred it into the female parent for pollination and he collected the seeds and he studied the production of the offspring so what did he do here first he took a say for example this is the male plant this is a bisexual flower it's a bisexual flower so in the bisexual flower what he did was he removed the anthers bisexual flowers means both the male and the female reproductive structure will be present in the same flower that is the antherium and the gynoecium will be present in the same flower so he removed the anthers now after that what he did was he took one more male reproductive flower he took one male reproductive flower which was having the anther 
he took the anthers and he dusted it onto the stigma. He dusted it onto the stigma of the female flower. Now what will happen? Fertilization will occur wherein the male gamete will fuse with the ova or the egg and after that the seeds will develop. These seeds he took and he sowed it to the soil. This is his experiment. Now what result he got out of this we will see in this particular table. So he took pure tall plant. So it is a monohybrid cross. Why it is a monohybrid? Only one gene is considered. The gene that is responsible for the height of the plant is what he took here. Now if he took genes which is responsible for the height of the plant as well as for the color of the plant, we will call it as dihybrid cross because two characters is considering here. Now you understood, no? So that is that way. So he took here only one character, which one? The height, height of the plant. Height, wherein he took the tall plant. So the tall he represented it as T. The short he rep you can't write S, it will be confusing. Always it should be the smaller alphabet that we take here. For short he took small letter T. So capital letter T is for tall plant. Small letter T is for short plant. So the tall plants all that he chose was male. Okay, that is. He took the pollen grains from the anthers of the tall plant. Then the short plant that he took was all females. In the female plant, what did he remove? He removed the anthers. Why? Because emasculation need to be done or else what will happen is from the tall plant, if he does the pollen grains here, if the anther is there, that same pollen grains will fall and you will not get a good result. So therefore, in this plant, anther was removed. That meaning he did emasculation emasculation. Next what he did? So that is what is shown here. Now he took a, this is homozygous. Okay, homozygous is represented as it is a pure tall plant. Heterozygous, I will tell you, if it is neither dwarf nor tall, it is short, we can write it as T, T. It is heterozygous like this. Okay, you will understand that when I will explain here. So pure tall plant he took. Now this pure tall plant is what? It is a male. So he took the pollen grains from this. And then he took a pure dolf plant. This is a female. These are the parents. Parents, one is the male and one is the female. One, the male is taller in height. Female is shorter. And it is represented by what genes? It is represented by TT. TT for taller and opposite of that small TT for shorter or dwarf. So what is this? This is capital T and this is small t. That is how it is. Next year, what he took? He made a cross between this. So, he got T and T. Therefore, it is the dominant one is which one? Tall plant. So, therefore, he called it as the tall plant. Now, this is the F1 generation. So, from the parents, what did he take? He took the gametes. He made a cross between the gametes which will fertilize and it will result in the formation of tall F1 generation. Now, what he did again, all the plants that he got, no, it was tall. So, he was not satisfied with one experiment. So, what he did was, he took all these plants, that is tall plants. Now, this is heterozygous. It is heterozygous. Why it is called heterozygous? Because it is having a dominant gene and a recessive gene, capital T and small t. Here it is, both are dominant, TT, it is homozygous. Here both are recessive, TT, it is homozygous only. But here one gene is tall and one more is shorter, capital T and small t, that is why it is called as heterozygous. Now in heterozygous also, all plants will be tall only because the dominant gene will always be expressed, okay, so that is why. Now, this heterozygous plant that is there, he took that, he crossed it with other heterozygous plants that is selfing, it's called selfing. So, he crossed it, then what he got here was, so we'll make a punnet square here. So, here we'll put a punnet square. So, what did he take? He took so he took a male plant and he took a female plant. So what was the genes there? TT. He took two plants, right? So we'll write it as T here and one small t, then T here and a small t. So this is the female, this is the male. I've just separated the genes and I've put it separately in separate box. Okay, this is the Punnett square. Now we'll do the crossing. So it will be 
टी टी देन टी टी एंड टी टी सो नेक्स्ट सेट ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंट वॉट ही गॉट इन इज फर्स्ट एक्सपेरिमेंट ही गॉट ऑल द प्लांट्स विच वर टॉल हेटीरोजाइगस नाउ दो हेटीरोजाइगस टॉल प्लांट्स ही टुक एंड ही मेड selfing with that that is one heterozygous tall plant he crossed it with another heterozygous tall plant now what did he get he got tall plant here it is homozygous because both are capital t's here he got a tall plant but it was heterozygous now here he got again a tall plant which is heterozygous here he got a dwarf plant which is homozygous so what is the ratio so we'll talk about the phenotypic and the genotypic ratio now so what is phenotypic and genotypic is what you need to know phenotypic it is nothing but the morphological character so when you see a plant now this pea plant when he has sown it in the garden by looking at it he can say this is a tall plant this is a short plant right so that is called as phenotypic ratio by looking at a plant what all characters you can tell about that plant that is called as phenotypic ratio now talking about genotypic ratio inside the cells what genes are present in the plant that is called as genotypic ratio those genes which are responsible for the character of that particular plant be it tall or be it dwarf now here talking about the phenotypic ratio looking at the plant forget about this capital t small t capital t small t and all that okay just by looking how much did you get how many tall are there one two three so three tall plants are there so therefore we wrote tall three is to how many dwarf plant only one right so is to one next we'll talk about genotypic ratio when we talk about genotypic ratio that is the time when we have to look about the tt and all that right so here how many homozygous tall is there one so he has taken one how many heterozygous tall is there two is there right so it is one is two two is two how many homozygous dwarf is there one is there how many heterozygous dwarf heterozygous dwarf is not possible again there uh, if it is capital t and small t the tall character only will be expressed so therefore only one so it is one one is to two is to one so this is how he found out so what he did do again he took a tall plant which was pure tall plant and he took a dwarf plant cross between that after crossing what did he get he got heterozygous tall plants the progenies were heterozygous tall plants f1 generation so those f1 generation itself he made selfing that is between heterozygous tall and heterozygous tall only he made a crossing then he got different plants that is homozygous tall plants heterozygous tall plants and also he got a dwarf plant so therefore in the f2 generation he did not find only tall plants but he could find both tall dwarf as well as dwarf plants also so this is his find out so with this punnett square we can calculate any characters we can calculate the phenotypic and the genotypic character so that is why to both the scientists also credit needs to be given in term for in the fields of field of genetic so this is about mendel's experiment that is monohybrid cross which is also called as inheritance of one gene monohybrid because only one character we took into consideration here that is the height of the plant so now we'll talk about the back cross and the test cross so since we know about the mono hybrid cross it will be easy for us to understand this as well so what is back cross so when crossing takes place between f1 hybrid with its any of the parent it is known as back cross that is say for example we did the crossing here right any one f1 hybrid so i'll take pure tall so we'll take the parent pure tall this is the parent male parent now with which should the crossing be done it should be crossed with the f1 hybrid now which is the f1 hybrid here this one right it is heterozygous tall so i'll write that here heterozygous tall from where did we get it from f1 hybrid so this is pure or it is homozygous tall parent this is heterozygous tall now it's called back cross because we are making a cross between the f1 hybrid we are crossing it back 
with that of the original parent that we took. So that is why it is called as back cross. Now we will do this. So when we take the cross, it will be T, T with that of T and T. So we will put the Punnett square here. So tall in dwarf, then tall and then dwarf. So this is the, so we will get tall plant here. Next, this is again tall plant here. This is tall. This is also tall. So we got 1 is to 1 ratio. So what did we get here? So in the F2 generation or in the next generation, we will get how many that is talking about the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio. So phenotypic ratio just by looking how many tall plants did we get. So all the plants are tall here. So talking about the genotypic ratio we can write that it is 2 is to 2 because we got it like this that is pure tall plants and homozygous tall plant and heterozygous tall plant. Therefore it is 1 is to 1 ratio. So this is how the calculation is done. So across it is nothing but already the F1 hybrid that we got, we are crossing that F1 hybrid with the pure parent that we have taken. So either we can cross it with the dominant parent or with that of the recessive parent also to have a look. So this is about the back cross. So next moving to test cross. So when crossing takes place between F1 hybrid with its recessive parent. So in test cross what we do we take the recessive parent, in back cross we take the dominant parent, dominant parent was chosen but in F cross the same F1 hybrid we are crossing it with the recessive parent and the ratio of the test cross will also be 1 is to 1 and it is used to find out the unknown genotype. So we will look at the test cross in detail in this particular slide. So Mendel conducted test cross to determine the F2 genotype. So example test cross between violet and white flower. So which character did he choose for his uh, test cross here? He chose the violet flower that is he chose the color of the flower wherein one of the pea plant had violet color flower and the other pea plant had white color flower. And to denote the genes he used the letter capital W and small w. For violet he used capital W, for white he used small w. So now what he did? So he made a cross between the violet flower and with that of the recessive parent. So recessive parent will have small letter w which is white. Now we will look into what will happen. So here we will take small w that is this side it is capital W and this is the small w. So we will consider this I will write it again like this for us to understand. So this recessive parent is represented by what small W and these are the violet flowers. So we made a cross between homozygous recessive parent. So according to him test crosses the dominant F1 hybrid is made to cross between a homozygous recessive parent right. So he took a homozygous recessive parent which was having white flower and a homozygous dominant parent which is having violet flower. So when he crossed he got all the flowers were violet in color. So to make it clear for you let's again do it with the Punnett square. So what he did he made crosses with a dominant flower which was violet in color represented as WW and a recessive parent which is white in color small w. Now we will cross What did we find? We found out that all the flowers are what? Violet in color because dominant gene is the one gets expressed here. So violet in color. So that is what he found out. All the flowers are violet. So next what he did was he again made a cross with the heterozygous. So this next violet flower that he took was heterozygous. That is he took this F1 hybrid. Now what is this test cross? So in test cross which is the F1 generation he got, the F1 generation that he got was this one, right? But it is 
heterozygous violet flower. Now, what does test cross say? Test cross says that the heterozygous F1 hybrid is crossed with the recessive parent. So, we are taking the F1 hybrid here that is W and capital W and small w. So, what is the F1 uh, hybrid here? Capital W and small w. It is crossed with what? It is crossed with the homozygous recessive parent itself which is white in color. Now, again for this I will put a Punnett square. So, what was it? He took a F1 hybrid. Now, the F1 hybrid had the genes capital W, small w. Then next what did he take? He made the cross with the recessive parent, right? Recessive parent means it will have small w, that is white flower. Now we will make the cross, capital W, small w, capital W, now this is small w and small w, again capital W and small w and small w and small w. Therefore, what did he get? Half of the flower. So this is violet, this is also again, uh, this is white. This one is violet and this is white, right? So, therefore, he got 2 is to 2 ratio or 1 is to 1. Half of the flowers were white in color, half of the flowers he got was violet in color. So, therefore, half of the flowers are violet and half of the flowers are white in color. So, that is nothing but test cross. So, this is about the back cross and the test cross. So, the only difference that you know, need to know is in back cross, the F1 hybrid that is got is crossed with one of the dominant parent, okay, that is back cross. In test cross, the F1 hybrid, that is heterozygous F1 hybrid that is there, it is crossed with the recessive parent, so that is called as test cross. So, in test cross, what do they get? They get half of the flowers which are violet and half of the flowers which are white. So, this is about the test cross. So, this was about the monohybrid crosses. So, in monohybrid crosses, we studied about the back cross and the test cross because all these are nothing but monohybrid crosses only because only one character or one single gene was considered under this. So, that is why. So, this was about this session. So, this was about this session. In the next session, we will talk about Mendel's principles or laws of inheritance. So, in this session, we got to know about the monohybrid cross, right? So, in the next session, uh, in monohybrid cross, there is the law of segregation and the law of uh, dominance that is seen. So, the same thing, what is this law of segregation? What is law of dominance? What is law of independent assortment? For independent assortment, we will take the example of dihybrid cross and learn there. So, these two topics we will learn in the coming session. So, see you in the next session. Thank you.